This is something new for me to be doing, and I don't know how much I'll do. I should give some background for this though. I was born in a Christian household, raised in a Christian community, before deciding that I didn't want to follow the faith and becoming an atheist. I'm not a part of any atheist community or organisation. I don't even particularly research atheism or atheist ideals. But as someone who grew up in a Christian bubble, I obviously thought and think a lot about the Christian faith, things I disagree with and other things I believe now. So when I see something like these questions for atheists, it does get me thinking, and I've decided to share my thoughts. Why is there something rather than nothing? I don't know, and that's fine. There are some interesting ideas though, such as nothing being an inherently unstable configuration. But even then, that would only give you the reason why the Big Bang took place, not why there is something now rather than nothing, as it is generally thought that matter would have formed as standard and antimatter varieties in equal amounts. If that had happened, then there would be nothing now, as all matter would have been obliterated. So it's a question that is being worked on, and the answer isn't all that important to me, aside from being more information about the universe we live in. Is there any evidence that suggests the universe is eternal? I think what you're actually asking is if there is evidence that excludes the possibility of a finite universe. Evidence can often support multiple conclusions, so of course there will be some evidence out there that can suggest an eternal universe but it either also supports or is neutral with a finite universe. If not, why do atheists hold on to the idea and say you have debunked the Callum cosmological argument? The first assumption here is that atheists believe the universe is eternal, which I don't think they do in general. But they still find the Kalam cosmological argument to be a bad argument, especially when it is used to support a particular religion because all you really come to is the conclusion that SOMETHING caused the universe. Okay, but why should that be your god? Especially when your god isn't described as creating the universe in the way we see evidence of. If so, why do the vast majority of scientists reject this idea? Because the body of evidence doesn't point to an eternal universe. The universe is expanding. The further we look out into the universe, generally the simpler the galaxies we see become. And all around us we see the cosmic microwave background radiation that was predicted to have appeared as the universe cooled after the Big Bang. Why is the universe so fine-tuned? First, a couple of ideas. One, it's possible that there are just no other tunings that can come out of the Big Bang. That when a Big Bang occurs, there is a cascade of equilibrium states that forces will fall to that results in a universe that can support life. Two, we are simply not in a universe that can't support life. It's the observer bias. Even if this universe couldn't support life, the forces could still be very specific values. There would just be no one around to call it fine-tuned. And this is basically the multiverse idea. Now, I've recently heard that there is evidence to suggest that these forces may not be constant throughout the whole universe. If this is proven true, then it would only strengthen that this question comes from an observer bias. If I'm holding a winning lotto ticket, then it would be stupid to say that it can't possibly be a winning ticket because the chance to win is tiny. It's not surprising it's a winning ticket because you know it's a winning ticket. It's not surprising this area of the universe can support life because we know it can support life. How unlikely something is doesn't really matter after it has already occurred, unless you're expecting it to happen again. If your answer is the multiverse, why is there no evidence for that theory? Because we've only just started looking for it. In fact, something else I recently heard is that circular patterns in the CMB may have been caused by black holes prior to the Big Bang. This is kind of mind-boggling, as prior to the Big Bang doesn't really make sense within our universe, 
but if this gains support, then it would quite literally be evidence of the multiverse idea. But that's getting ahead of ourselves. The multiverse idea is fairly new, and there are variations to it, so first we need to work out what we are looking for, what would constitute as evidence for or against it, and how to test it. To be fair, there is no evidence against the multiverse idea. As of yet, it is neutral. Is it possible that there is no natural explanation for the origin of life? This question is a little bit different from the others, but is kind of similar in being an origin type question, so I'll cover it here. It is possible that there is no natural explanation. Even if we can create life in a lab from chemicals, we can't really prove how life first started within our universe or on our planet. So, it is likely the origin of life will reach a point where we can say how it can happen, but we can't say for sure how and where it did happen. And it is possible that new life is appearing all the time. But remember that bacteria and organisms are everywhere. The places we think that life could form are already swarming with competition. If any new simple cells appeared, they would just be food. I'm going to stop here for now. Maybe in a week or two I'll post my answers to the next seven or eight questions. Laters.